Welcome to Tennis Spit, where we put our spin on your tennis. Today, we're going to be talking about pro stock rackets. Yes, those rackets that pros get to use, that unfortunately a lot of us don't get to use. Before I get started, wanted to thank my coffee sponsor of the day, James Tin Yi Feng. Uh, this one's for you. Thank you for your continued support. If you want to support my Black Rose Coffee habit, it's buy me a coffee forward slash tennis spin. Thank you in advance. Okay, so. Topic of the day, pro stock rackets. So last year was the first time ever that any of the major tennis companies decided to release a pro stock racket. And then when I mean pro stock racket, I mean it's actually pro stock racket exclusively to the pros only. So. And you guys know, you know, the, the, you guys know that it used to be called H22. It is called Blade Pro. And this is the version 8 one that came out maybe a couple months ago. But the version 7 was the same. It's basically a paint job. As you can see, though, as you can see, it's a gloss paint on here. Nothing about this is a matte finish. Like nothing. It's all slippery. It's all glossy. But why is it a pro stock? Well, this was the, actually a stock racket that was offered to Wilson sponsored players who basically want a specific kind of spec that could be customizable. So, this actually wasn't the final product for most of their sponsored players. They basically added weight, maybe, you know, in the top, in the bottom, underneath the, the head guard to make it their own or put a leather grip, uh, pop out the bottom, add some silicone in, um, and basically kind of make it their own. But this was the pro stock stock. Pro stock stock from Wilson that, but unless you were a pro, you weren't able to get, but Wilson released it to the general public about a year ago. And it did very, very well, very, very well. People were after this, like there was no tomorrow and it's still sold out today and it keeps selling out because, you know, it's one of those things that you could never get before. And it's actually a really good playing racket. Um, when I, when I was stringing rackets um, back in the day of tournaments, I actually strung a ton of these, but it looked like other rackets. It looked like a pro staff. It looked like a steam. It looked like a burn. Uh, it, but this was the actual core racket, though. Now, I say that this is a pro stock stock racket, which means this is the standard mold for most pros. But... Some of the major pros, though, like Novak, Andy Murray, theirs are very specific. They are actually playing with an older racket. If you guys know the uh, Pro Tour 280 from back in the day, the Tomas Muster, if you guys know who that is, Andy Murray is actually playing with that mold. It's a PGT... 11 something something. I don't know the name specific of it, but there is a name to it. But it's actually an older mold that gets customized to his specs. Now here's the differences between the Pro Stock and a regular blade. Look at the paint. It's a different paint. It actually looks like a, no, it's about the same beam. Like, this is much more slippery. This is actually not as glossy. 
Yeah, this is way slippery. So it's like somebody greased this pro one up. What does that mean? More feel. Okay. So I actually have an Andy Murray racket right here. Now, if you look at the racket itself, we're going to count mains here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. This is a special make because it's actually a 16. That Tomas Mooster, from what I remember, was an 18. This is a 1619 version of it. He may have since changed, but this is what he played with in 2012. So he was tinkering with rackets. Um, he does change a little bit once in a blue moon, but if you look at the sides here, all right, it has a cap, a cap guard. You can actually cap guard most rackets back in this day. I'm not sure if they still do that. Because um, my buddy James actually brought me a cap guard for his radical and I was like, what the hell is this? Anyways, but I was able to put it on. Um, so this is a customized racket from back in the day in a 1619 pattern. So this is a different mold that he actually customized himself. I did a video on this racket that I opened up. Now I'm gonna link that to the bottom here or the top and you can see the specs of it. It's super, super heavy. There's a ton of lead underneath that cap guard and there's a ton of lead underneath this handle. Um, there's actually a different pallet in this handle. So, so he, what happens as Andy Murray was coming up in the juniors, he basically was using a particular type of racket, probably the Tomas Muster racket in some form of a 1619 or an 1820. And so he got used to that feel. As he grew bigger and stronger, he added more weight to that racket or he got the heavier version of that racket. Now, we know racket companies change rackets, paint jobs, new technologies, every couple years. It's usually a two year cycle, three years max, just cause they, they want you to buy more rackets. And the pros can't change that quickly. They don't want to change that quickly. Therefore, what happens is they take an older racket and now we're talking 20 years later that it's that same racket with just a more modern off the shelf paint job. So, so what happens is because Andy likes it a certain way, you know, just from years of tinkering or having his person add weight to, to the top, add weight to the bottom, add weight to the sides. He likes it a certain way. He has a swing coach that tells him like, yeah, you should lighten up here or add some more there. You know, depend, depends on the swing plane. So what happens is they take notes of what he likes and what he's currently playing with. They actually take a blank. They, they call them a, they call them harpins, which is basically a racket. That's this racket without the handle, without the cast foam grip. So it's basically just the graphite portion of the racket and they make sure though that 1619, 1820, 1620, 1819, 1619, like any of the patterns, they make sure that it's well spaced, kind of like this, because you don't really see a head racket that's this spaced. So this is some kind of a mold from the past. And they make sure that he doesn't need another cross or add two more mains before they finish it off. And so it goes like that, right? Painted to whatever's on the wall in a radical form without this cast foam grip to a specialist. 
um, like the P1 guys or my man in New York. And they basically look at his specs. They add the weight to the bottom. They possibly need to add weight underneath. And the guy, the specialist, actually has a cast foaming machine. And it, he chooses how he, Andy chooses how he wants his palette to be. Whether it be more rectangular or more square um, to his grip size, he probably has his mold there. And then it actually gets casted to how he likes. Like, it's a cool process. I've seen a, a video on it. And and then at the end, it gets specked out a little more for balance and for weight and for swing weight before it actually gets a grip on it, that turner, and it gets to Andy. And then when he's done with his rackets, right, he's got essentially 12, 24, Rackets that are totally identical. They are weighted the same, balanced the same, and swing weighted the same. So that when you pick up one versus another, that there is zero difference. There is no differences at all. So when they say pro stock, right, a bunch of people actually has to touch it to make it that perfect. That's why when you pull them off the shelf, it's usually not perfect when you get 10 or 12 rackets they're all slightly different it's because other hands have to touch it to make it perfect now is there i mean is there a big difference besides um you know somebody touching it that's customizing it for let's say andy or let's say Novak, right? Not really. Because if you think about it, these are this one and Andy's racket is actually an older mold. So it's actually an older racket. You can actually buy older stock, let's say 20 years old, 30 years old rackets. And it, it, it would actually be similar if not these rackets um, from back then. So what is the difference then? What is the difference? Not a whole lot, guys. It's really not a whole lot. It's still carbon graphite. It's just so customized for that player that, you know, it's perfectly tuned, just like an instrument for Andy, for Novak to play with. Now, what I would advise for you guys, though, I mean, I know that, you know, having a pro stock of this, buying the blade, you know, buying the the Novak, you know, pro stock is you know, something that we all want. I get it. I get it. I, I wanted to feel what Roger feel, feels. I wanted to feel what, what Rafa feels. And those are actually the two easiest rackets to recreate. Um, I've done videos on that, too. So um, if my producer is nice enough, we'll actually link those to the top too. All right, you can actually make them yourself or have your store make them. It's not that hard. Or you can have me make them, let me know. Um, but if you wanted, I, I understand that we all want, you know, pro stock this, um, but it's the most important thing is for you to customize it and make your own pro stock. So make sure, see, I'm kind of going through a racket journey right now. Uh, make sure you like the racket in stock form, in stock form, whether it be this Blade Pro or a standard blade, make sure you like it and then start tinkering with it. You know, start, you know, if you don't get enough plow, add some to three and nine. If it's still not enough plow, add a little to 12. If it's now too head heavy and we want to counterbalance it out, add some underneath the handle. You will eventually, you will eventually find your weight, your swing weight and, and the balance that you like. But it actually takes a lot of time and uh, for you paying attention to your own game to make your own pro stock. But it's not, 
it's not rocket science though. I mean, it's just a lot of trial and error before you figure out what you like. So, so that's the journey of actually a pro stock racket. It's not any different than what's on the, you know, on the wall, except that it just goes through, um, hands that actually people have to painstakingly labor on to make it perfect for that pro. Okay. Guys, thank you so much for watching Tennis Spin, where we put our spin on your tennis.